Book 44 of 2020 was The Wind Up Girl by Paolo Bacigalupi. I found this book on Amazon because I was looking for dystopia books that were not YA because with dystopia I like the kind of political undercurrents so I like classic kind of dystopias like um, 1984, Brave New Worlds, that kind of thing and the YA section is all about like a boy and a girl and they're in a dystopic world which doesn't really have that political undercurrent that I like so I don't kind of like the stuff that's out in YA so I was looking for something else but this book is um, again set in a dystopic world but this is of the kind of like biopunk genre so for me personally it's not my taste and it's a bit iffy I mean, initially, when you first start reading it, it is quite immersive. It's quite good in the sense that it um, it's talking about, like, they're in basically in Thailand. And you just feel straight away like you're in Thailand, because I've been to Thailand a couple of times. And when I was reading it, I was like, yeah, this is exactly what it's like in Thailand. Like, I, I felt like the, the author had been there and knew what it was like, because he was creating the world in a very authentic way so for example the language that he uses is Thai language the customs of Thailand are in there such as um, you weigh as a mark of respect to another person and, and you always weigh if the other person is older than you um, or if they are of a higher status than you are and things like as well in Thailand they revere the monarchy like you can't say anything bad about the monarchy because it's really disrespectful so a lot of those things were in the book and so it kind of felt really authentic and there's um the Mahuts I think that's how you pronounce it I'm not sure so the people that sit on top of the elephants a classic thing in Thailand so there's kind of a lot of stuff in there that that automatically immerses you into it you know you're in Thailand but obviously this is in the future and it's a future where they have so the reason it's biopunk is because they have hacked um like the genes of food to try and I guess like like breed them or whatever but what they've ended up like make them better specialize them but what they've ended up doing is that they've got like diseases like blister rust and so there's a food shortage and there's like a global catastrophe where there's like waters are rising and Thailand is one of the few places that are still kind of going uh, because everywhere else is underwater and, and everywhere else is starving because there's there's no food like the, the the land won't grow food anymore um because it's infected by by lots of like blister rust and there's another one um like that I can't pronounce so I'm not gonna even gonna try um so you're in this kind of world it's very kind of reminiscent in that sense of um Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Craig but with this one it's better because there's a more urgent feel to it like in Oryx and Craig it's just like you know the, the biohacking everything but there's no real issue of them doing it whereas in this one it's like the downside to doing this because then then you know it's having an impact on 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 food and there are you know in Thailand they've got these this like seed um cash if you will and this stops them from basically dying out and starving the problem though with the biopunk genre is that it's quite similar to so this book's very reminiscent of um William Gibson's Neuromancer which is more of like the cyberpunk genre because it's dystopic but it's to do with kind of computers um I'm quite bewildered by William Gibson and Neuromancer because a lot of people like it but from a literary perspective it's a really badly written book and so this one is very reminiscent of that it feels a lot like that because it's got quite a loose plot where I mean it's called The Wind Up Girl and The Wind Up Girl is basically like um like a, a robot um but it's like a i mean essentially she ends up in a in a brothel and 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 guys sleep with her but she's she's deemed as like dirty like you don't want to kind of be associated with her um and she's obviously controlled and stuff but she's but she's conscious and she's 
like a like a person but obviously she's in like a robotic body if you will and and she she can't breed or anything like that um because they'd hacked some genes and created like these cat things and they bred and then they end up out of control um and so they made sure that anything else that they hacked and made that they didn't do that to anymore so she's kind of like trapped in a kind of existential kind of situation um but it's not really about her like like the so this is the thing like the plot's so confusing because the characters at the end do cross over but all the way kind of through the book they're kind of separate and there's different things going on that then kind of come together but like the the, the story isn't focused on this wind-up girl so it's an odd title to name the book when it's not really about her she's obviously in it but it's not it's not really about her um the characterization as well is quite hollow i mean in the sense of her obviously she's going to be quite hollow because she's she's a robot but the other characters there's like a, a guy called i think he's called anderson um who who is an american who's come to thailand to he's like pausing as something that he's not um and there's another guy who's from from Myanmar I think can't quite remember he's from somewhere where they've um then is, was he not from chat he's from somewhere where they were going to kill him basically they call him like a yellow card um and he's got like low status even though he was like royalty back in in his not royalty but like of a well I guess I'm trying to think what do they call it in like eastern places like oh you'd imagine like a lord in england maybe they're of that status um in the east wherever he was from i can't quite remember it's quite a while ago since i read this but um he so he there's him in it as well and then there's kind of like a, a mafia style person and then there's like a government that has two characters in it that again they're not very flashed out and a, an example of this is as a character who works for the um oh i should have really looked at this before i did it for the for the white courts i think they're called no that can't be right that's like when you like you get taken to a psychiatric ward isn't it white shirts is it called white shirts he's, he's like um he basically burns down this dock and um he's like called a tiger or something um he's like a tie fighter and he's trying to uh, make sure that the, the Thai culture is protected and it's not kind of like extorted by like Agrigen, which is like this corporation from America that's done all this gene hacking. But when it's describing him, I thought that he was like a young guy from the way that he was being told because he's very immature and he's like the, the actions that he's doing don't suggest that he's actually a middle-aged man married with two children. And it, the characterization really jarred for me because I was like, I'm imagining one way and then you find out a little bit more about him and it's it completely rechanged what I thought of him. And usually like when you, you read in books and you have characters, obviously you don't have a full picture of them straight away, but as you build up, it makes sense that you add on to that kind of uh, picture of them. But it, it just completely was different when I was reading it. So the characterization jarred for me. It didn't really kind of make much sense. And similarly, a lot of the characterizations just doesn't feel like they're real people. It's quite, you know, it's not a character driven book. It's a plot driven book, but the plot doesn't really make sense that much. So it's very, very, you know, loose plot, loose characterization. But again, this is reminiscent of this genre. Like this is what this genre tends to do. It doesn't really have a, a development of the characters in that much detail. Um, I guess it, it I mean it's a, it's a lot better than Neuromancer was let's say that um and there is more of a semblance of a plot and there is I mean there is like a, a commentary on the character's kind of mindset and stuff but there's this there's this really weird bit where there's like a ghost and they're talking to the ghost and I get that that might be part of Thai culture but from a western perspective it was a bit strange and it was a bit laboured it kind of carried on a lot of the time um and Another thing that is in these genres is that there's some ex like sexually explicit content um, because obviously she works in a brothel, but then also she's sleeping with this um, character. I'll not spoil it if you do want to read it. And it's there's a real objectification of women. Now, I understand why that is, because obviously she is a wind up girl. She is being used in that way. She was designed to be a sex 
robot doll kind of woman fake woman whatever you want to call it i understand that but it just it just makes me feel uncomfortable to read things like that um and it's something that it, it feels like it's written from a male perspective. I don't think if a female was writing about that, that it would be written in the same way. Um, and I find this as well in the Neuromancer because there's a, I mean, it's different in that one, which is, is worse because it's two, it's a man and a woman and they're, have, they're having sex with each other, but it, the woman's, it is literally objectification. Um, you know, there's always comments on what women look like and not necessarily what their character's like. And so it kind of felt a little bit like that. Uh, in this book as well um and it's also reminiscent because it's very confusing in the sense that there's a lot of things that isn't that aren't explained um so for example there's you know the um there's a megadont which i mean doesn't exist it's like based on a historical animal i mean there is a picture on the front of it it's like it's kind of an elephant but it's got big massive um tusks i was trying to think what they're called um but it's like a, supposed to be a massive uh which I suppose, I mean, that, that just basically looks like an elephant, but it's supposed to be a lot bigger than that. Um, so that was really confusing at first because they were talking about it and there's like these spindles and, and they're talking about kink springs, but kink springs, but they're not really explained. You don't really know what they are. And it kind of, it tells you a little bit, but it's just really vague. It's just very vague. And it's like, there's not much description in there for you to fully understand what's happening. But this is very much like the Neuromancer. So I imagine that this might be something of the genre. I mean, obviously lots of people like Neuromancer, so maybe people like this, but it's not for me. Like I just didn't, like I like a book that's got lots of description, that I can properly visualise things, that there's a lot of character, mental, psychological thing in it, which this book doesn't do. So if you like that stuff as well, it's not going to be for you. So overall, I mean, as well, it's a very, very long book and it took me ages to read it and I didn't really find it that exciting to read um so i mean if you like kind of cyberpunk biopunk you'll probably enjoy it you know, if you like oryx and craig for example you'll probably enjoy it but for me um it's not it's not my taste so i i wouldn't recommend it or read anything else that's like it again to be honest completely put me off like those kind of genres those punk genres it's not it's not my bag at all